guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Haley and I am back again with another Wedding Wednesday video. This week, we're going to be talking about my top wedding budget saving tips. If you're new around here, hi, I'm Haley. How you doing? I currently work in the bridal industry selling wedding dresses. I love weddings and at one point I planned an entire wedding for under $7,000. That wedding ended up not happening, but I still have a whole world of knowledge that I am now going to be sharing with you. So hopefully some good came out of that because clearly a marriage did not. Anywho, without further ado, let's get into these budget saving tips. The most expensive part of your wedding will most likely be your venue. And so that is why you should choose a venue that is non all inclusive. Now at first glance, an all-inclusive venue sounds like a great deal. However, in those packages, you're unable to negotiate prices or search slash shop around for the best priced vendor. So while it might seem like a great deal on the surface, there's not a lot of flexibility there. That's why I suggest finding a venue that allows you to outsource your vendors. If the only venues in your area are all-inclusive or are outside of your price point, then you can look into a public park, such as a national forest, a beach, or just a really pretty meadowy park in your area. Oftentimes, these are really cheap to rent and also have plenty of space to work with. Now, keep in mind that should you choose this route, you might then need to rent things like tables, chairs, linens, sound systems, bathrooms. There's a lot that might go into that that might make it a little bit more expensive than just choosing an already established venue, but that's something that you're gonna have to do the research on. And unfortunately, it all just depends on your area. A great blank slate choice is an Elks Lodge. A lot of Elks Lodges are just buildings that aren't really being used that often, that have plenty of space, plenty of chairs and tables. They're also really cheap to rent typically. Another great choice is your local fairgrounds. Now, this also depends on your area. Some fairgrounds just smell like pigs and cows, and some are actually really nice. For example, my hometown has these really awesome corrugated metal barns that are giant with just concrete floors, and so they really don't smell like animals or livestock, and they're typically really clean and really cheap to rent. I've actually attended a wedding in one of these, and they did a really good job of decorating it and it went really smoothly. Also, there were running bathrooms just a few feet away. So check your local fairgrounds and think about if any of the vendor buildings would work as a venue. Now my final tip, should none of these apply to you, is to pick an off-season date, time, and day of the week. For example, instead of having a Saturday at 8 p.m. wedding, have a Sunday at 11 a.m. wedding and save yourself thousands of dollars. For my wedding, we were going to have it on a Friday evening and it actually saved us $500. A Thursday wedding would have actually saved us $1,500. Alcohol is another huge budget killer. So if you don't value alcohol and you don't really care to have it at your wedding, Feel free to not have it at your wedding. You could totally have a dry wedding. A lot of people do. If you do want to have alcohol, instead of doing an open bar, I recommend doing a beer, wine, and signature cocktail. And if you can, find a venue that allows you to outsource that and therefore you can purchase it all at Costco. Instead of doing soft drinks and sodas, we were just going to do iced tea, water, and lemonade in giant beverage containers and it was gonna look so beautiful and also pretty much satisfy all of our guests. Now let's get into the fun part, the decor. If you choose a more expensive or more beautiful venue, such as the beach, you're not going to need as much decor and therefore that is something that you don't even have to allocate funds towards. You can just allow the scenery to be your decor and let it shine for itself. However, if you're working with something like the fairgrounds or an Elks Lodge, you might need to invest a little bit more into decor, but don't worry, it does not have to break the bank. My number one tip is to thrift and buy used. So you can join a whole bunch of local garage sale pages or wedding resale pages and find things like candles or lanterns or faux greenery or arbors Pretty much anything that people have used for their wedding once and now don't have a use for. 
For my wedding, I actually thrifted most of our decor. We were having an eclectic tea party theme, and so I thrifted a whole bunch of mismatched china and centerpiece um, tea, teapots for my centerpieces, and pretty much all of our decor was either going to come from the thrift store or come from one of those used yard sale pre pages. English, I cannot speak today. One way that you can save money if you don't like the idea of thrifting is to avoid florals. Even if you're not sourcing them from a florist, florals can be so expensive. So I recommend just not even having them, or if you are, to just do greenery. Instead of florals, you can do things like candles, vintage books, lanterns, and unique trink trinkets and bottles. Personally, I think favors are a waste of money. I think most people don't really enjoy them. They just kind of end up in the garbage. And so I would not waste any of my money doing favors. However, if you are gonna do favors, try to find something that can be purchased in bulk and then broken apart and packaged individually by yourself. For example, I was having a tea party themed wedding. So one thing that we could have done was order bulk tea um, loose leaf tea and then individually packaged it into little sachets with a cute little sticker from Amazon and boom for like 10 cents a piece we could have had these really adorable personalized favors. Another great idea is to purchase those bulk mini honeys or jams like they have at hotels and customized or even not customized stickers that say like thank you or your last name and your wedding date um, that can be sourced from Vistaprint and just stick those on the top of the jar, wrap it in a cute little bow, and boom, you have a cute little favor that costed you 60 bucks. Speaking of honey, tea, and jam, that's getting me a little bit hungry, so let's talk about food. <laughs> My number one tip is to choose a buffet-styled service rather than a table-side service. This is just significantly cheaper. Then look into fast service places that cater corporate events typically, like Panera, or Chick-fil-A, or Chipotle, or even a pizzeria. A lot of the times, companies like these are equipped to handle catering giant events. However, they're just not used to catering weddings, and so they're not priced at that wedding catering price. Most of the time, fast service catering companies require you to pick up the food the day of, which also saves you a lot of money because you don't have to pay for someone to transport it to your event. Should you choose a drop off or you pick up and bring to your event type of caterer, make sure that you hire bussers to serve all of your tables because let's be honest, your friends and family are gonna be on the dance floor. They're not gonna be cleaning up their plates. And so you really don't wanna be in charge at the end of your night when you should be on your way to your honeymoon of picking up people's trash because they thought that there was a caterer there to do it for them. I would recommend seeking out local teenagers or just anyone in need of a quick buck. Another great option that's really fun, especially for a super eclectic type of wedding, is to have a food truck. Now my last tip has to do with our desserts and that is to source all of your desserts from either a small local baker or bakery or to go to the grocery store. If you choose a single tier cake as your wedding cake, you can decorate that yourself for like 40 bucks. And if you want, I can do a video on that and how I was gonna do that for my own wedding and I can show you my plan and exactly how that would look. Um, personally, I would have a single tiered cake with um, fresh florals put inside of it so that it looks really pretty and simple. And then a sheet cake to serve to the rest of my party instead of a several tiered cake from an expensive wedding specialist. I also was gonna have a dessert table with a whole bunch of mini desserts so that people could pick and choose. And on the mini scale, desserts tend to be so much cheaper than on the larger scale. Let's be honest, that Chantilly cake at Whole Foods slaps. Like that is the best cake ever. And it's only like $45 for a larger one. Safeway and Albertsons also have some really good dessert. Okay, let's move on to attire. So my number one tip for the grooms or anybody who wants to wear a suit is to either thrift your suit, wear a basic black suit, 
that most of the time you already have or purchase it discounted at some place like Burlington or even Ross sometimes has some great suit options. And the reason that I keep saying suit is because typically suits are cheaper than tuxedos. If you want a designer gown, but you cannot afford to pay that designer price, one thing that you can do is purchase that exact gown used on sites like stillwhite.com or preownedweddingdresses.com and I'll link those down below. Those are two websites that I personally trust because they vet their sellers. Another great option is to look into any charity bridal shops in your area. This is a newer concept but they are starting to kind of pop up throughout the country. I actually work at a charity bridal shop so it looks like a regular bridal shop. You go in, you have that boutique experience but everything in the shop is either pre-owned or a sample gown that has been donated for charity. Everything is off the rack, what you see is what you get which can be kind of a downside but it's also really exciting because you don't have to worry about ordering your dress and waiting for it to come in and this is also a great option for anyone who is on a tight timeline. The shop that I work at is located in Tucson, Arizona, and we actually have a few of our dresses online at freeeveraftebridal.com. If you want to learn more about Free Ever After Bridal, then I will have our website linked down below. A lot of local bridal shops will do sample sales, and sometimes you can get fantastic gowns at fantastic prices, but I would advise against sample sales if you are on a tight um, timeline because a lot of the time people think that they're gonna go to a sample sale and find an incredible dress at an incredible price and it turns out that all of the samples are really ripped up and damaged beads are missing buttons are missing beyond repair and they're dirty a lot of people don't realize how worn down sample gowns can actually become. Like I said, I work at a shop where all the dresses are donated, so most of them are either samples or pre-owned. And personally, I would purchase a pre-owned gown that has been worn once over a gown that has been tried on a million times in the shop. So my next tip is to avoid paper products. Avoid sending invitations and save the dates and instead opt for digital stationery that you can design for free on Canva or that you can order for a really cheap price on sites like Minted or Zola or The Knot. Speaking of Zola and The Knot, you can design yourself a free wedding website and registry. I used Zola for my wedding that I was going to have and it looked so beautiful. It was so easy to set up and with that you can actually set up separate little pages so that you can put you know your menu or a program or any like frequently asked questions that way you don't have to print that stuff out and hand it to each guest if you decide that you want to have a physical copy of that information at your wedding instead of handing that out to each individual person which takes a lot of paper and a lot of money i would recommend just having one large sign so here's our menu it's on this big beautiful sign or written on a thrift store mirror in chalk paint and here's all the information you need to see and it's just boom right there one thing one sign you don't have to worry about anything else or printing it up and paper products can get so expensive and then they just end up getting thrown away really you just have to sit down with yourself and your fiance and figure out what you prioritize because if you are on a super tight budget, you're gonna have to pick. You're gonna have to pick what is most important to you and what you think you need to spend your money on. So get real with yourself, figure out your priorities, and if something doesn't make your priority list, find cheaper solutions. Let me know if you have any tips that I haven't mentioned in this video in the comments down below because you could be helping someone out tremendously. Let me know if you're gonna be implementing any of these tips for your event. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I really hope that it was helpful. If you're not getting married or you're just like not into my Wedding Wednesday content but you wanna see more things from me, still subscribe because I do post other things and I also have an antique booth business and post behind the scenes business content and really just a lot of things so be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss on that type of stuff too and I will see you guys in my next video bye